Hi everyone, Lose the Stuff, Stuff Tano here, here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it is time for a review of the new Strokes record, The New Abnormal. This is the latest full-length LP from legendary New York rock band, The Strokes. Julian Casablancas, Albert, Nick, Nikolai, and Fab are back with a new collection of songs. Seven years after what many fans consider to be their worst full-length album, The Come Down Machine. Ah. Now that I've made you mad, I do apologize, but still, you know, a, lo a lot of Strokes fans don't really care for that record. So while it's been seven years since that record, this time period has not been entirely fruitless. After all, we got two pretty great records from Julian Casablancas's The Voids, and Albert Hammond Jr. put out some solo records as well that had songs on them. They really did. So it was just this past February the band began teasing toward this record with the first single at the door. That and every track from it since has been weird to some degree. Combine that with the title of this thing, also the Basquiat artwork that serves as the cover, uh, along with the fact that Rick Rubin, none other than Rick Rubin, has produced this thing. We may be in for the oddest Strokes album yet, even odder than Angles. In one breath, while the record is is pretty boundary pushing for the band, it's also a little regressive too. As a Strokes record hasn't sounded this messy and distorted since Is This It. Simultaneously all over this LP, the band is taking vocal and instrumental risks that you can't find on any previous project. Also, much of the songwriting on this LP tends to be long winding, some of the lengthiest stroke songs yet. We have one five minute cut after another on this thing, which on average is kind of long for a stroke song. There's even the track Eternal Summer, which does feel like an eternity, and we will get into why later. But the opening track, The Adults Are Talking, I think is a pretty peppy start to the project. With its quirky sequence drums, upbeat groove, and twangy thin guitar leads that are just propelling the track in that classic way they do in many strokes songs. The band then suddenly switches gears into these low-key, alluring, groovy verses where Julian plays it super sensual, and while the song itself is good, the band progresses through way more transitional moments and instrumental bridges than I think they need to. You have a solo portion around the two-minute mark, around the four-minute mark, a whole section in the second half devoted just to Julian pulling out this insane falsetto that is uh, actually really gratifying. This is just way more elongated than stroke songs typically are, but since what is being drawn out is so good, I'm here for it. We then go into a moodier direction with the following cut, Selfless. It's a ballad, kicks off with some watery arpeggios that sound like the intro to a Beach House song, but then they're met pretty quickly with some simple bass and drums, Julian's voice as well, and the Strokes vibe just takes over. I absolutely love how Julian's voice extends on the chorus of this thing, just ascending uh, through this multi-phased hook that just brings me higher and higher and higher into a state of sadness. It's overtaking me. The depression. Ow. From here we get an instrumental bridge, another hook. It's a very roundabout way of structuring a rock track, but still, I like it. Following this, we have the track Brooklyn Bridge to Chorus, which I do love, but this is my impression of me first hearing this track. Rick Rubin, what the fuck are you doing? Are you kidding me? Bro. Goddamn, this song is compressed to hell. The synthesizer leads on the intro are searing. I would not recommend a headphone listen on this one. The drums come off almost like static some of the time, and why do the main synth chords of the track suddenly like drop in volume and change in tone partway through both verses at, at different points? That's just one of many weird sonic qualities to this track. The chords are also derivative as fuck, by the way. I have no idea how uh, the strokes are getting away with this and not being being sued by some random synth pop group from uh, decades ago. However, I guess it's pretty meta given Julian's references to uh, 80s music in the lyrics. Either way, I still think it's a solid tune, fantastic hook, and the noisy mix and layering along with the kitchen sink instrumentation I think plays in generally to the oddity of the album. I want new friends, but they don't want me. We then transition into a track that the more I listen to it, the colder I grow 
grow toward it bad decisions. So many parts of this track are painfully derivative, and I know about the Billy Idol writer credit, I'm not even talking just about that, but that damn intro guitar line on this song too also feels like a straight 80s ripoff. Anyway, the tight transitions of chirpy guitars and driving drums are pretty classic strokes, but I can't say I'm crazy about the very repetitive one-note, one-dimensional chorus on this thing. I'm making bad decisions. I'm making bad decisions. <laughs> Not only is the instrumentation coming together in a way that's a bit too sloppy, but also there are way better hooks deeper into the project. However, the rough patch on this album does continue into the track Eternal Summer, which is my least favorite track here. From the deafening blast of keys and guitar layers on the intro to Julian's goofy choir boy falsetto, it's a rough ride. Then the band, as if the track weren't weird enough, transitions periodically into these heavy, screamed, Pink Floyd-inspired rock passages, which if you don't think they sound like Floyd, wait till the third time they bring it back where it sounds the most Floyd-ish. These spots sound like a damn leftover from the wall. Thankfully, things pick up with the track At The Door, which the more I listen to it, the more I realize it's actually one of my favorite Stroke songs ever. I love how skeletal and dry and somehow dramatic the intro is, very stark as well with the presentation of just these burning synthesizers uh, that are very fat and just uh, very aggressive, very in your face, very bright, and then Julian's voice and that's it. And the lyrics are kind of frightening too, a little bit of a sense of dread coming through on them with Julian singing about uh, needing to escape something or not not being able to make it out of something. Then this ghostly set of synths sets the tone for Julian singing this line about uh, something striking him like a chord, and then all of a sudden the guitars pop in. Aha, uh -huh, funny, interesting, smart, got it. And once they pop in, damn, I'm just floating. It's amazing. It's, it, it is a blissful depression. I'm high, but simultaneously, I am feeling those lines about sinking like a stone. Which is one of a few points on the track where Julian likens himself to an object of some sort, especially one that's being used, like a use me like an oar to get yourself to shore, which brings up the sentiments of self-sacrifice uh, deeper into the track, another surreal moment uh, where Julian turns into an object. Uh, he's singing about being a cannonball, slamming through your wall. Then the bridge instrumentation on the track turns pretty heavenly and we move into a psychedelic finish toward the very end and uh, yeah just a very odd series of shifts and uh, changes throughout this track that I think are really cool. Why Are Sundays So Depressing is a pretty slick and swagger packed rock song where Julian's weirdo charisma is off the charts. The hooks on this track see a transition suddenly into these very squelchy I think enveloped synthesizers and Julian's voice being slathered in these robotic effects. It is a very weird aesthetic shift, but uh, somehow one that works, at least much better than the ones that were on Eternal Summer. In the album's final moments, we have the track Not the Same Anymore, which is an absolutely depressing and low-key song with a lot of crying guitar leads. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but there is something about those lead melodies and the chord progression on this track, too, that reminds me of another song, but I, I can't think of the specific track, but still, uh, there were moments that read to me as, as being a little inspired by My Guitar Gently Weeps, or Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You, or Lover I Don't Have to Love. <laughs> It's that kind of drama. The chorus on this track again feels like classic strokes, but slowed down to the point where it's a bit sludgier and mushier, which at first feel a bit awkward, but I will say the more extended bits of these hooks are pretty sweet to the ear and uh, uh, melodically ambitious. There's a real emotional exorcism type quality to them too. Then to top things off, we have the track Ode to the Mets, which is one of the more gratifying slow burners here. Yet another song whose numerous parts all feel like they're being borrowed from somewhere else and recontextualized in a way where it's hard to tell what their origin is exactly. Anyway, the appeal of this one, I think, is its linear nature where everything about the track, the vocals, the instrumentation grows more and more intense, uh, but somehow is, uh, <laughs> I guess, kind of rocking me into a, a sad, quarantined slumber. Overall, I was pretty impressed with this record. I'm glad that The Strokes did this album. I'm glad that it is as left field as it 
seems to be on the surface anyway. I don't know exactly how much forethought went into a lot of the weirder ideas on this project, honestly, but uh, either way, the band comes through with way more hits than misses. And despite my major enjoyment of this LP, along with it being, in my opinion, one of the band's most exciting records to date, uh, I will forever be skipping uh, Eternal Summer. But seriously, cheers to the band for coming through with an album titled The New Abnormal, and it actually lives up to the title. <laughs> I am feeling a strong 7 to a light 8 on this one. Transition, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, The Strokes, forever.